forget about you. It's D106.3 and D on DAB. It's Wednesday morning, and I've got a friend of the show, Alex Staniforth from Council, sitting opposite me. Morning, Alex. Morning, Alan. Nice to see you again. And you. It's been a while. Uh, it has been a while. It's been a good few months since we last got an update um, of your very busy life. <laughs> you just told me that you did a 63-mile cycle ride yesterday. Yeah. And today, you've just run into our studios here on Sealer Road from town. That was because I was uh, late <laughs> unintentionally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to be honest, even if I was late anywhere, I don't think I'd contemplate running from town. It's been a good two or three miles, I suppose, from town to here. Yeah. How, how, how long did it take you? Didn't look at the time, I just realised I was late. <laughs> and you've not even broken into a sweat, to be fair. There's a reason why you're doing all this training, isn't there? And that's yeah, why you're yeah. here today, because next week you're off to the Himalayas, you're going up Mirror Peak and Baruntse. Baruntse, yeah. Okay, so this is a bit of a warm-up for next year's main event, which is going up Everest. But but this yeah. is this is a pretty big event itself, and and you've been um, you've been undertaking an awful lot of training over the last few months, and it really pretty much has taken over your whole life this expedition, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean it's a hundred percent. You know, um, it's got to be really because this sort of thing is there's a lot of work involved, there's, there's a lot of training. Um, a big, big challenge ahead, so as I said, you know, it's, it's got to be 100% or nothing, really. Okay, so, um, I don't know where to start with this. Let's start with the physical preparation, first of all. I've already s said that you did a 63-mile <laughs> cycle ride yesterday. There's more miles than I've cycled in my whole life since I was about 14. <laughs> um, and, and you're running all over the place as well. And this is pretty relentless, this training schedule. Um, yeah, I mean, if anything, it's not as much as I'd like. Um, I've got to be careful to make sure I don't get injured before this climb, which just cost me a lot of money. Um, essentially, though, it's just a mix of everything from bike rides to runs, um, you know, runs, I can be doing hill intervals, sprinting, lo long runs, half marathons, uh, all sorts of things. Um, strength training as well, I mean, I'm built like a lamp pole, so I need to get some sort of bulk back in me, although bulk isn't really important. Um, I think the kind of key thing is that, you know, you've got to be able to keep on going when the pain comes in, it's just being able to keep on, you know, keep on you know, keep on going harder and harder, um, and that comes from lots of days in the hills. I've been walking everywhere this summer, from the Brecon Beacons to to, uh, to Snowdonia to the Lake District with big packs, sort of 45 pound packs on, going for hours and hours, and literally just taking a hammering really and get, getting strong and fit and stamina built up. How much of a preparation is that though? Because yes, walking up, you know, Snowdon and so on with 45 pound packs is going to be tough. Yeah. But it doesn't compare surely to the Himalayas. No, I mean that's, pro but it is actually the best kind of prep you can do. Um, you know, you know, big days in the hills is the best prep. I mean, um, that's why I've done as much as I could. But being here in Cheshire, it's not as easy as I like. If anything, as I say, it's just a case of being able to kind of, it's you know, it's ninety percent in your head more than anything to be able to keep on pushing when it gets hard. Mm -hmm. um, you can't prep for the altitude. That is the biggest problem when you're on these peaks. Um, you can't train for that, so essentially you're just going to get as strong physically as you can in terms of bulk and just to, just basically strengthening your legs and kind of um, mm. you know you know endurance and stamina. I mean, it's all good being you know it's all being um, it's all good being good in the gym, but it's not going to help you up there. It's all in your head, and if you don't have that, you you know you, so that's the most important thing. Yeah, we've all heard of altitude sickness, but but yeah. what exactly is it? Altitude sickness, I mean, can range from very mild to kind of severe um, things, and obviously it depends on the height you go in. If you go in the Alps, you can get a bit of a headache, a bit of sickness, which I got in the Alps last mm. year. And then, uh, then obviously as you go higher and higher, the kind of um, you know the condition can become more severe, uh, can, can become you know um, a lot more serious. But but uh, but of course that's why you have to obviously you know that's why I'm spending two weeks you know walking from uh, Kathmandu to um, you know, to the base camp to basically, you know, basically get used to the altitude, um, and that that that's all it is. It's a case of being careful, going steady, and if you need to, you've got the emergency measures in place. Well, okay, so we've all heard of Everest. Uh, less of us will have heard of Mira Peak and Baruntse. So, yeah, what can you tell us about that area? Yeah, it's a different area. It's not far from Everest. I'll be able to see Everest from the summit. Um, but it's a different area. It's completely, it's very, very kind of quiet and remote compared to Everest, um, which in itself is a beautiful part of the world. Mm. It's a stunning peak. Um, Mera Peak is quite straightforward. That's, uh, you know, that's actually an acclimatization peak, f um, you know, in the first week just to basically get, you know, get to 6,400 meters. Um, quite easy, just a trek. Then we move from there to Brunswick Base Camp, which is a lot more serious, 7,100 meters. Um, she's getting into s serious altitude, really. Um, 23,000 feet. Mm. Um, now that's harder than I've ever climbed before. Um, graded, grade two. Uh, there's a crux of an ice wall to uh, enjoy at 7,000 meters. Um, it's actually more technical than Everest. Uh, not much, but a little bit more. Um, 
but of course it's high enough and not too high um and itself is it's just a it's just a gorgeous peak really it's stunning and it's you know it's very quiet it doesn't have anywhere near as many um you know um you know you know it's a lot more quiet and that's what's going to be beautiful really. i'm sure it'll be absolutely stunning and and something that you'll never ever forget oh, yeah, your, your whole life definitely. i mean it sounds amazing and i'm sure a lot of us would love to do it um many people aren't fit enough to to do it um you've explained in quite a lot of detail about how you've got yourself to this fitness but is there a sort of a regime that sort of uh, polices whether or not you're in the right state, either physically or mentally, or both, to go up the mountain. I mean, essentially, um, you know, you know, my expedition is led by a company called uh, Avenger Peaks, based in Ambleside. So there's four British climbers on this expedition, you know, you know, and myself. And basically, they obviously have kind of a um, a basic kind of state which you have, you know, I've got to meet to actually join the expedition. They won't just let anybody go there. Uh, otherwise, you get people paying a fortune going up there and can't cope C can't cope mm. and then it's you know that it's unsafe mm. um essentially um that's why i chose it because it, even though it's you know even though it's kind of a you know it, it's a high peak it's a hard peak it's in my kind of you know um you know I mean, it's in my skill it's not as if i'm going too hard too soon that, that's why i chose yeah. it basically if you meet their requirements it's just a case of getting as strong as you can so that I'm spending all this money that I need to go up there and make sure I've got the best chance to have. Okay, make, well, make it the top. we'll come back and talk about the, the financial side of it and also the, That's the fun part. The, organization, <laughs> the organizations that you're going to be supporting by doing this after uh, the Manic Street Preachers. They're the Manic Street Preachers, of course. And that's their current song. She's great, isn't it? It's called Show Me the Wonder. And I'm uh, chatting with Alex Staniforth, who's off next week, next Saturday, is it, Alex? Next Saturday, yes, to Nepal for a month. To Nepal for a month, during which she's going to climb Mirror Peak and Baronse, um, which two major challenges, as we've just discussed. Uh, in a way, though, it's preparation for your climb of Everest next year. Um, and you've shown huge physical determination um, in getting yourself in the correct shape to be able to undertake this challenge, but there's a whole lot more to it. You've had to raise an awful lot of money to cover the cost, and I know that you're pushing yourself to raise as much money as you can as a result of your adventures to help a couple of real good charities. Yeah, I mean, uh, Everest isn't cheap, especially to do it in a safe and sensible way. Um, fortunately, last week I confirmed my first major sponsor, uh, Tex Local, uh, based in Pulford, uh, in Chester, Malvern, um, they're the UK's number one mobile messaging service. Um, so obviously thanks to them uh, and their support, um, and other sponsors so far, um, I'm more than halfway uh, to my exhibition total, which is f close to £35,000 now. Oh. I know that's kind of what most people earn in a year. Um, it's a lot of money, um, but essentially um, that's the only way Everest can happen. As well as that, I've had to raise the money for this exhibition in October. That was raised through fundraising, sponsorship, grants, my money, um, you know, money for my 18th birthday of my parents and things. Um, but essentially, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not cheap, and but I'm just prepared to make it happen. Um, sponsorship is, I can't obviously explain all in, 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 in an interview, but it's a long process of literally contacting lots of people, approaching them. Um, sponsorship isn't easy nowadays, and when I first started this, people told me to get sponsorship is, you know, it's... It, 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 nowadays is very, very mm. hard. Because of the economic climate and so on. All sorts of things, but, um, you know, fortunately I found... Um, you know, I found a big firm who believes in me, and they're the, you know, they're always helping me um, in buying kit and buying my satellite phone, so I can kind of keep in touch with parents, things while I'm away. Um, well, they've backed the right man. I can tell them that <laughs> they're listening this morning. Yes, yeah. I've never known anybody with so much determination. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously proud that uh, I'm getting, you know, the help and things. You know, you know, it's great, really. Um, and, it's just, yeah, and now, I mean, I've still got a big chunk of money st still. Um, still to raise by mid-Feb. I'm obviously not here now for a whole month um, because this one that's over has cost me £7,500 right. on top of the 35 and it seems a lot of money but I want this more than anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've still got a lot of money still to raise but to be in this position now and be backed by such big brands as well is, um, you know, is a strong position to be in and I'm confident I'll get there. And it is going to be a great adventure for you, something you'll remember your whole life. Uh, you're using this to raise the profile of two very worthwhile charities and to try yeah. and, uh, and raise, you've set yourself quite a high target for the, for the amount of money you want to raise for them. Always aim, you know, as high as you can dream, I say, but um, yeah, and want to raise pretty much the same amount of money again, £29,035 a foot per foot of Everest, a uh, pound per foot of Everest mm -hmm. um, for Click Sergeant and React. Two awesome, you know, um, two kind of causes I've supported in the past and things. And basically, um, you know, by doing that, I can obviously make my dream happen and help, you know, these causes which are, which obviously, you know, which are 
pretty important nowadays as well. So it's you know it's not just a holiday; it's one that actually can hopefully uh, inspire other kids so that they can basically make things happen as well yeah. by hard work and also raise a lot of money for you know, for causes. And yeah. that'll be starting soon in terms of when I get back back from the climb, I'll be starting to try and reach that target as well. Okay. Well, Click Sergeant, I, I guess most people know is a, a charity relating to children who uh, children suffer from cancer. cancer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I chose them because, of course, you know there are people out there who aren't you know who aren't you know who who are, uh, you know, who aren't kind of quite as kind of fortunate as myself. Um, I lost my auntie to cancer last year and kind of seen how much pain it can cause people. Mm. Um, so that's why I chose them. Uh, and react. I mean, I've always been interested in animals since a young age. So, you know, it's a big challenge for a good cause, really. Mm. You brought in the jacket that you're going to wear. Yeah. When, um, you, when you go up uh, Broadsea. My mom, it's a uh, big jacket, yeah, a big down insulated thing. It's not as thick as I thought it would be because it's going to be jolly cold up there. It will be, yeah. P probably looking at minus 30. In fact, it's not much colder than Everest. Um, it's not as big as my big down suit that I got, I got off Marmot this week. Um, Marmot on my main, on, uh, on my, on my main uh, sponsor for the kit um, as well. But they've given me this big down suit, which is literally, it's, it's like a Ronald McDonald suit. Um, it's, <laughs> nice. like, it's like full, he full head to toe in yellow and red, <laughs> big down suit. Um, there won't be many people up there to see you in it. No, I mean, McDonald's might sponsor me now, but um, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, your thinking, I like your thinking. That, that won't be worn... Uh, <laughs> That won't be worn in, um, you know, this climb, but that's what I'm, that's what, you know, that's what, what I've obviously got Everest. Um, I've got most of my kit now from Marm at Crag Hopper's an icebreaker and the free uh, sponsors as well. Mm. Um, gear is expensive there because you're in such a harsh environment. My boots are rated down to minus 60. Um, I know girls think they spend a lot on boots, but I've spent a lot more, believe, uh, believe <laughs> you me. You can show them a thing or two. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's on my kit, and that's going to be branded up soon with the Tats Local logo as well. Excellent. So next Saturday you're flying off to... Uh, Nepal and you'll be when we see you next you'll have uh, Mirror Peak and Baruncy under your belt. I'll be on the summit hopefully yeah. You certainly will well uh, I know that people are able to follow your progress. Absolutely Tell yeah. us how we can do that. Okay um, I've got my blog on my site which is alex94th.com um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm on Facebook as well and uh, you know you know YouTube and things like that it's all linked to my site so if you Go on my site, there's links there to all my social media, and people can follow my updates on there. Um, I'm in the papers, and I'll be back here in November, hopefully with all my hands and toes, to uh, talk about it as well. Fingers crossed, I'll be counting your, your fingers and toes in. <laughs> uh, are you going to be able to update your blog when you're halfway up a mountain? Yeah, um, I'm, my blog, m m maybe not, but I've got people to obviously man my things for me. Uh, I'll be sending updates home by satellite phone, right. and, that, and then pictures and, and everything that will come when I get home. Um, yeah. Whereas on Everest, I'll have internet access through a satcom system, so I'll be able to send pictures more, more and more. But I will be, you know, I'll be posting updates as much as I can right. while I'm there. Well, well, Alex, I wish you all the very best Thank for you. your, yeah. your, your two peaks, the two peaks that you're going to conquer over the next four or five weeks. I, I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. We'll look forward to monitoring your progress via your website, which is alexstanningforth.com, A-L-E-X-S-T-A-N-I-F-O-R-T-H.com. Hey, got that right, didn't I? Did. Get in there. I wasn't even <laughs> reading that off a bit of paper, honest. And uh, we'll see you back in the studio, what, towards the second half of November when you're back to look tell us to how it all went. Look forward Absolutely. To it. Cheers, Al girl. Alex Stanniforth. D106.3.